welcome to the SBCA podcast, Component Connection. Hello, my name is Sean Shields, and today I'll be your host for this SBCA podcast series, looking at trends in the component manufacturer's supply chain. My guest today is Hardy Wenzel, CEO of Structuralam Mass Timber Corporation, a company that has been around for about 50 years and is currently helping lead the charge for cross-laminated timber use in North America. Hardy, thanks for joining us today. Hey, you're very welcome, Sean. I'm excited to be a part of your podcast. So, Hardy, you have been in the structural wood products industry for a long time, and you've held senior leadership roles with well-known companies like Tolco, Warehouser, and Trust Choice. Can you share a little bit about your path and how you developed such a passion for mass timber? Well, um, I began in the uh, engineered wood products sector, literally right out of engineering school, right when I finished college in, in Canada, and had the great fortune of being hired by uh, Trust Joyce, a company you had already mentioned. And that was right at the very early days of the uh, engineered lumber industry. So wooden eye joists and LVL beams, Paralam beams, uh, LSL beams, were all a very nascent product at that time. And so as I grew in the company, the uh, industry was growing. I got to experience a lot of different places to live and work. I worked in Canada, East Coast, West Coast. I worked in California. And then I had uh, in the mid 90s to the early 2000s, I got to live and lead the uh, Trust Choice European operations. And I was there for seven years. And during that time, mass timber in Austria, where it was originally uh, developed, uh, Austria, southern Germany, Switzerland, were all really starting to make a movement with cross-laminated timber as well as uh, glue lamb beams. So the glue lamb beams create the framework of the structure, the columns, the beams, the purlins, and the mass timber CLT panels or cross-laminated timber become the uh, floor plates and wall plates to frame the horizontal planes and the vertical planes in the, in the structure. So the combination of those two elements are, is what I call mass timber. But uh, with me being there in the early days of uh, European mass timber, I really got to see how it was beginning to shape and form. And I must say, I was originally a bit of a skeptic because I was in Europe uh, selling slender, very efficient wooden eye joists with very precisely engineered laminated veneer lumber and laminated strand lumbers and parallel strand lumbers that were highly optimized engineered solutions for building construction. And when I was looking at my peers in Europe, uh, taking essentially coniferous softwood two by six boards and gluing them together to make these massive billets of wood, I thought uh, this is another planet and I'm not sure uh, if this should work. So I was skeptical. But now in hindsight, I look back at it and I see the benefits of what mass timber does. And what I would like to really share with your audience is that it is not a replacement for light wood framing construction. It is really a building material, an engineered wood building material that will displace concrete and steel. And this is a completely different new arena for engineered wood products to step into. And uh, I've really now uh, uh, become extremely passionate about the opportunities with wood as a, a renewable building material very strong and stable when it's reconstituted as an engineered wood product. And so I find it to be the uh, answer for many of our global issues right now with uh, climate change and greenhouse gases. And and I look at the movement of what's going on in our industry around sustainability. uh, And it just answers so many questions. And uh, you have things emerging now in both America and Canada at the federal and state level and provincial level governments and even at the local city level jurisdictions 
around building more with sustainable building materials. So it's it's really not the wood structures that we have to be worried about in our uh, building environment today. It's the concrete and steel structures that need to have an adjustment. And so mass timber is that is that uh, disruptor. And uh, with that, it uh, brings out all the passion of all the different things I've learned along the years at Trust Joyce, at Weyerhaeuser, at Tolco, in OSB industries, in lumber industries, in engineered wood industries, in building materials distribution, in the roof truss industry, et cetera, et cetera. So it really, basically, my life work is coming to a head here to apply these skills to mass timber. I love it. You know, before we go too far, uh, Hardy, can you just briefly describe for our listeners exactly what CLT is, how it's made, and if you can go back to uh, your time there in Europe, like what was going on in the construction uh, industry that was prompting the development of this product? I'd love to do that. So cross-laminated timber is essentially uh, a very similar technology to making a glue laminated timber. So a glue lamb beam or column, uh, which is readily available in today's building material uh, industry in North America. Uh, we all know what a glue lamb is. Uh, it's the world's oldest engineered wood product. Um, it was first patented uh, back in the early 1800s in Germany. Um, so CLT is essentially taking a glue lamb technology but introducing every other layer is you're orientating your board in a perpendicular direction. So each layer is at 90 degrees to each other. So it's a lot like uh, how we think of plywood today. Uh, but what you do with CLT is you make a very large billet of wood. Uh, so, and it's rectangular uh, it, and it's flat. So it can be up to one foot thick, uh, 10 to 12 feet wide, and most presses in the industry are doing anything from uh, 20 feet in length, 30 feet in length, 40, 50, 60 feet in length. So it's it's variable in the length, and uh, every and it's made an odd number of layers. So you would to get that cross layer in there, you have a longitudinal layer of two by six lumber, uh, a cross layer of two by six lumber, then another longitudinal layer and you keep repeating that so you make a, a billet of wood that is uh, three ply, five ply, seven ply, nine ply so you can make it up to a foot thick and um, for example if you have a 40 foot press that is 10 feet wide you can make a panel 10 feet by 40 feet nine plies thick which would be uh, just over a foot thick, that's about 400 cubic feet of uh, CLT and at an approximate density of 35 pounds a cubic foot, you know, you've got a, a billet of wood that is approximately 15,000 pounds, which is quite an enormous beast of wood, I like to say. But if you think of it, that same piece of concrete has a density of about 150 pounds a cubic foot. So it has a similar strength rating, but it's one fifth of the density. So it just makes building design when you're compared to concrete, much simpler, much lighter, much more ductile in a seismic area or a high wind zone area. And so it really becomes a perfect building material. And when you couple that with the glue lamb framework, you, you end up with a building material that is very engineered, very lightweight, very ductile. And with our new building codes, you can now in 2021 uh, start to look at structures that are 18 stories tall. So we'll get into the building codes in just a second, but I'm, I'm still curious, like, where did this product come from? Like, was it the, the desire to move away from concrete and steel in Europe that was driving product manufacturers to sort of look at this? I would imagine there's a fair amount of research and development that went into exactly how these CLT panels were originally made. 
Great question, uh, Sean. So Dr. Gerhard Schickhofer from the University of Graz in Austria was really the leading thinker behind uh, CLT. As I said, uh, Glulam had been around for you know well over a hundred years, and uh, but Dr. Schickhofer had the vision of developing a wood-based product for all of its sustainability factors, uh, one that could be made from a renewable ingredient, which is. Uh, lumber made from sawn timber or from uh, from logs, and he did all the research and the development at uh, the University of Graz, and um, he started to unfold his ideas in the mid 1990s uh, in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland, where there was quite a large uh, heavy timber building culture. So he introduced this technology and he was looking for something to displace concrete uh, that had all the sustainability benefits. And that's really uh, where this came from. And I'd also like to add that Dr. Schickhofer in uh, last year was awarded the uh, Wallenberg Prize in Sweden for a notable achievement for the forest products industry. And I must say that is a very prestigious honor and uh, award to receive. I've attended the uh, Wallenberg Prize ceremony uh, while I was living in Europe. And um, I think it, uh, the achievement made here with CLT is very deserving because I think it's going to disrupt uh, how we build buildings, not only uh, in America and Canada, but uh, across the world. So you raise a good point that um, it was originally developed in Europe, uh, but it's recently sort of made its way across the ocean here to North America. What would you say were the, the primary reasons why uh, that transition occurred here? What conditions existed here in the United States? Was it the same thing of this desire to replace steel and concrete to make buildings lighter, easier to, to construct? Or was there something else going on? Well, I think there were a couple of factors. I think the primary one is that we are all thinking much more about uh, sustainability than we ever had before. And I have to say in my 30 plus year career that uh, it basically spanned the globe in Europe, in Canada, in the US and Asia, that never before have I seen um, developers and building owners talk about sustainability and building sustainability into their projects like I am hearing today. So it is really top of mind for all consumers and people that serve these consumers and developers are always looking on how to sell their product or lease their product or rent their product uh, at a better rate or at a better margin than uh, their competitors. So. It's really starting to come through. I wouldn't say it's the top consideration yet, but uh, in my 30 plus years, I've seen it move from a non-discussion point to actually be in the top five uh, conversations that we're having with uh, people considering um, developing a building project. So Europe has always been, I would say, um, advanced in their thinking when it comes to uh, the environment. And so that mindset is now very global. And uh, it came to North America actually through some government and industry organizations, both in Canada and the US. However, the province of British Columbia was very much an early adopter. Uh, we had a premier named Gordon Campbell back in the mid 2000s who wanted to add more value to the BC forest products industry. So the British Columbia uh, economy is deeply rooted in forest products. And he wanted to find, uh, he had two mandates to industry then. He wanted to find new markets for BC forest products. And he also wanted to find uh, or develop new products. 
And so naturally, uh, mass timber was already on a track in Europe. So in the industry associations that were behind this effort looked at uh, CLT and said, you know, we should take a very, very deep and close look at uh, if this product can work in North America. And if so, what would we have to do to adapt it? So there is a government agency, a provincial uh, agency in British Columbia called the uh, Forest Products Innovation Center. And it is funded by industry and it is funded by government. And, um, and for example, Structural Lamb is an association member and we, we provide funding to FP Innovations. And uh, they did extensive research around uh, CLT and how would it have to conform to our Canadian and U.S. building codes. And I must also tell your listeners that many of Canada's forest products do end up in, in the U.S. And uh, so there was a big, uh, uh, a big effort to make sure it would work in the United States as well. So how would it, what would have to be done to adapt it to the international building code of in the U.S.? What would, how would we handle the fire codes? How would we handle the uh, 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 moisture mediation work on a job site? Um, all of these things had to be identified. And one of the most important factors was uh, how can we make this out of uh, the tree species that grow in the North American wood baskets? Uh, so FB Innovations uh, worked on this for several years, and then in 2011, they actually issued a CLT handbook. And this is a, about an 800-page reference guide that speaks to all the technical requirements of the building codes, of the fire codes, of acoustics, of moisture uh, penetration, et cetera, et cetera. And they, in fact, just released uh, a few weeks ago the 2019 edition. So it's all been updated now, and I would encourage your viewers to download a copy um, because it can be downloaded. The download is free. It's called the CLT Handbook by FP Innovations. And uh, there's a Canadian version and an American version because our two building codes are slightly different. But the, the drivers for using mass timber are now evident. Uh, uh, Structural Lamb was one of the first manufacturers to make CLT, even after almost uh, over 50 years of being in the uh, glue lamb business. We were the first manufacturer in North America. And um, we have since 2011, we have done over 400 market-based development projects using uh, CLT and glue lamb as a mass timber solution for, for builders. So I think the adoption rate is here and our, our building codes have now adopted mass timber as, as a building material. When you mentioned the building codes, a lot has been made about the changes in the 2021 model codes uh, that'll make CLT construction even more prevalent than what you've seen occur since 2011. Uh, can you briefly describe what some of those changes entail and explain why it's such a big deal? Yeah, I sure can. In fact, uh, with the uh, CLT handbook, which is um, what I was just discussing, um, Structural Lab has also uh, prepared and is about to launch a uh, uh, mass timber technical guide for users and builders of and designers of mass timber. And so what has uh, happened is um, uh, code authorities through a consensus uh, model, meaning um, the consensus codes include uh, all your design official uh, professionals, building officials and uh, code authorities, etc., to come up with the model code as known as the International Building Code in the US. And um, it, it actually was uh, introduced in the code in 2015 and in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, when manufactured uh, in accordance with the ANSI manufacturing standards, so that's the American National Standards Institute 
for CLT and for glue laminated timber, when you follow those manufacturing standards, um, you're allowed to use mass timber in, in several different uh, building typologies. So obviously multifamily residential up to six stories, uh, conventional non-residential construction up to six stories. So that would be your offices, banks, hotels, dormitories, health buildings, uh, ex excluding hospitals, and even large non residential uh, buildings uh, up to six stories. So warehouses, stores, public recreation, et cetera, et cetera. So in the new code, uh, there is going to be in the type four construction, there's going to be uh, provisions now made to do up to a maximum of 18 stories in type 4a and uh, 12 stories in type 4b and up to nine stories in type 4c construction and as you go higher you're you basically you have to reduce the amount of of exposed mass timber in the structure there's um up to 12 stories, you can reveal a certain amount, a certain percentage of mass timber in the walls and roofs and ceilings. And you would require up to a two hour fire resistance rating. Uh, but up to the 18 stories, you have to have a three hour rating. And, um, and this can all be done with various different types of building assembly. So I don't wanna go too much into a, a code discussion here, uh, Sean, but the what I do want to leave your listeners with is that um, uh, the building codes are in 2021 will allow this. Certain jurisdictions have already adopted the 2021 uh, building codes, and as long as you're using products that are made to the to the uh, ANSI manufacturing standards. All your design properties, all of your compatibility to fire codes and seismic codes, et cetera, is all going to be um, uh, acceptable to building officials. So it's quite uh, an important uh, change. And I think because it was done with a consensus code approach, you really had a lot of different points of view come to the code process and, and validate uh, using mass timber in these 18-story, 12-story, and 9-story height classes um, unanimously. Uh, there was uh, almost uh, no pushback at that consensus code level when the voting occurred that uh, this was the right thing to do for, uh, for the people using these places uh, where we live and work and play. So... It shows the thought leadership of all of our industry thinkers around using a sustainability uh, or a sustainable building product like mass timber in these applications. And it has been time proven in Europe. And I think it's only going to allow us to um, make these structures out of wood in the future much more easily. I, and I also have to add that I have never seen a, uh, a code approval process adopt a new engineered wood product as quickly as our code officials have done so in both Canada and the U.S. with with mass timber. I joists today are still not referenced in the building code, uh, as are many other uh, building materials. Yet mass timber has really, um, really advanced itself very quickly. So Hardy, you. You acknowledge that the adoption has been swift, uh, that the building codes have now, at least for the 2021 codes, have embraced CLT. A lot of people in the industry, in the wood products industry, sort of look at CLT as a positive development for wood construction overall. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, obviously, I, I really do. For, for all the reasons I've already mentioned, you know, and, and I think uh, what's really important to know is that it's really not going to cannibalize light wood frame construction because of these code adjustments now and these changes. 
the target market is really going to be in these higher structures where light wood frame construction is not allowed to participate in uh, in our uh, building codes. So it's really an additive piece to the wood-based construction uh, building materials. And so I really am excited to know that the uh, the future should be bright and, uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, the only thing we all know about the future is that uh, it's not optional. Everyone will attend, but what it will look like, we won't know until we're in it. But um, we're making investments uh, in mass timber here in British Columbia. We've, we're making an investment right now in central Arkansas and Conway, Arkansas, to add our, our uh, make Arkansas our second home and uh, add a state-of-the-art mass timber facility in Conway. And you're also seeing other investors make investments uh, in this new emerging building space as well. So we're very excited about it. So Hardy, a lot of what you've talked about today is is really looking at CLT as a replacement for concrete and steel. And these, as you said, sort of these higher uh, structures, a multi-story, 12 to 18 kind of range. Um, you see that sort of as a sweet spot for, for CLT going forward? Yeah, so we're seeing obviously uh, mid-rise construction uh, in both multifamily, uh, but also in that mixed use developments where you have a retail space on the ground floor, your coffee shops and stores and restaurants. And then above that, you would see uh, some professional offices and above that you would see some residential units. So we're seeing good uptake there. We're, we're also seeing it uh, in a lot of these um, larger scale corporate campus projects. For example, in Hillsboro, Oregon, we were involved in a project called the First Tech Credit Union. And, um, and in Silicon Valley, uh, we're finishing a project for a Microsoft campus. Um, we're working on projects also for Google. Um, uh, Walmart will be building or supplying uh, mass timber products to their uh, large scale new campus that they're building for their home office. So we're, we're seeing a lot of these iconic brands build these uh, workplaces that are very, very uh, beautiful places to come to work, uh, to provoke a thought and to really for the knowledge based industry or for the uh, banking industry. So we're seeing a lot of architecture being developed in that uh, building typology. Um, we have seen some uptake in the large residential, so in warehouse and public and recreation facilities, uh, school facilities. So, you know, you're kind of government building projects. But I just have to say again that the, the main part of this, our, the, the backbone of our business are entrepreneurial market-based developments where we're doing a custom building, one building at a time, and adapting the mass timber products into the scope and the design that that building owner and his architect wants to achieve. And we're really following that uh, market-based development as our, our bread and butter, if you will. And a lot of these other larger projects are just great projects to be involved with, but we're not, we're not building our business case around those. I think that the pedigree of Structure Lamb and our experience of over 50 years of North American construction experience, uh, our engineered wood know-how is what's uh, affording us to win those projects. So, um, it's quite a quite an exciting uh, thing to to be involved with right now. So if we focus Hardy then on the CLT built environment, so these these buildings that are getting constructed, not only now but sort of where you see this going, um, do you think there is a market opportunity for traditional manufacturers of light frame structural wood products, namely truss manufacturers, wall panelizers, modular? Um, you said that they didn't necessarily cannibalize, but uh, do you think that they can thrive together? Is there a room for this light frame construction along with CLT? 
Yes, there absolutely is. And we're seeing it uh, already. So, you know, we've done, I would say in the last five years, several uh, projects where we have coexisted with light wood frame construction and uh, particularly it's in the um, what we call the hybrid light frame building system. So that's using uh, a CLT panel and uh, some glue lamb headers and beams and columns uh, in a um, multifamily development or a mixed use development where the, uh, the roof will be a trust roof system and the walls will be a panelized wall system that's all off-site construction. So, you know, we're bringing the custom-made uh, horizontal floor plates and, that are, have all the MEP infrastructure uh, pre-cut to allow for installation on a job site to uh, sit on top of uh, pre prefabricated light frame wall systems that are delivered to the job site that are pre-built custom made for for that same project. So it's a very uh, symbiotic relationship that we have in areas where we can coexist with the traditional manufacturers of light frame structural wood products. So I'm very, very uh, bullish on that sector because we're, we're already doing it and uh, uh, the developer likes it, the builders like it because, um, you know, their crews are assembly are essentially assembling a kit of parts, whether it's walls, floor plates and roof truss systems. Uh, it's a very good uh, coexistence. Well, I have a feeling most of our listeners will appreciate hearing that. So let's, let's fast forward 15 years, look into your crystal ball as the head of, of Structure Lamb. If you look out 15 years, you know, looking at what the 2021 codes will enable, looking at what projects you're already working on right now, where do you see CLT um, maturing into? Like, where is that market going in 15 years? What, what would you like to see happen with regard to the use of CLT and uh, just overall wood construction? Yeah, that's a that's a really fun question, and I'm glad you asked it because um, I love to try to uh, predict the future, <laughs> even though I know it's uh, it's not something I should uh, I should do frequently. But my my vision for this industry, um, and really, I think you won't be surprised based on some of the bullish comments I've been making about uh, mass timber on this podcast. But you know, my vision is that it's going to be a very very uh, important part of our construction industry. And I like to refer to it as, uh, as, as a mass timber revolution, um, just because it is such a disruptive uh, technology. And I'm bullish about it because, uh, and this in some ways will summarize the, the podcast here, Sean, but I'm bullish about it because the um, fact number one, North Americans have a very, very uh, large building with wood culture. So when we go to build a house, we go and we look at wood as our go-to building material. Now it can be a piece of engineered wood, as I mentioned before, an eye joist, it can be a piece of LVL, a glue lamb, it can be wall studs, it can be dimensional lumber joists, it can be OSB, wall panels, plywood floor decks, uh, wood uh, roof trusses, prefab walls that are made out of uh, wall studs, wooden wall studs. So our go-to building material, and even in our pre-2021 building code environment, was if we can build a structure up to six stories, a mid-rise building up to six stories tall, we're going to build it out of wood. That is every industry, uh, everyone in our industries go to, whether you're an architect, an engineer, developer, etc. So number one, we have a very, very strong building with wood culture. And it's in fact, you know, given my time living in Europe uh, as a warehouser executive, I know for a fact our building with wood culture is stronger in North America than it is anywhere else in Europe. You know, the go-to building materials in Europe are bricks and mortar and concrete and um, 
Yes, they have a thriving mass timber industry, but it is not the go-to building material. So when our thinkers have to think about a building, we think wood first. So that's, that's a very important point. Secondarily, we have adopted mass timber into our model building codes so quickly and have just basically laid down a runway for the industry to start using this environmentally friendly and sustainably grown building material uh, right now. And, uh, you know, Structural Lamb's already been doing it uh, for uh, nearly 10 years. So, and, you know, we've helped pioneer the way. So I think that's another huge advantage is that uh, we uh, have the building codes on our sides now to to uh, allow us to think creatively and make the adjustments that need to be made. Thirdly, I would say is that the um, to get in the building code, all of our glue laminated timber products and our cross laminated timber products all conform to a manufacturing standard that uh, in Europe is um, a really difficult thing to do. And um, you have many national requirements in Europe, say, for example, in Germany and Austria and Switzerland and France and Belgium, uh, Nordic countries, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not like uh, it's not all under an umbrella code yet. And uh, so we've really have these manufacturing standards that give specifiers the assurance that they need that, you know, our quality control practices are in place. We're not using foreign lumber species. We're using lumber from our native wood baskets. Uh, we're using glues and resins that conform to our fire codes. And uh, so we've got a lot of the technical requirements at our fingertips to to specify and design products. So now it's going to require the fullness of time to um, have the pioneering work be done um, with, you know, architects in every city, with engineers in every city, with builders in every city. But the other uh, benefit we have, and this is really the fourth and final point on this, is that our our governments and our large industry players are putting a lot of funding uh, behind the development and the adaptation of mass timber for North American building standards. In that funding, they're also doing some fantastic market outreach work. When I look what uh, Woodworks is doing in the U.S. and the Canada Wood Council in Canada on helping talk to people in each major city at lunch and learn sessions on webinars, uh, providing technical resource backup to an architect or an engineer that is looking at this for the first time. That, that apparatus is doing fantastic work, missionary work to get mass timber seeded into the, uh, into the, the minds of our building designers. So we've got a lot of things going in our favor, Sean, that I think are really going to take this to a new level. And my prediction, to answer your, your fundamental question, my prediction is, is that the mass timber industry in North America is going to be on a, uh, a, you know, if you compare it to square footage of construction, I think our penetration rate is going to be higher than what we're going to see, uh, what we're currently seeing in Europe. And just for a frame of reference, is that 10%, 17%? Geez, you know, if I uh, if I if I tell you my secret sauce, we're going to get too many investors coming to this industry. So I'm going to hold that one back on you, Sean. All right, just better than Europe. We'll stick with that. <laughs> Hardy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on our podcast today. You're very welcome. I'm happy. Uh, also, if you want to direct any of the listeners to structurelam.com. If they want to track me down, please, uh, please do so. Um, um, my LinkedIn post has got a lot of good uh, thought leadership pieces on it. So uh, I'll be happy to help to uh, talk to any of your guests uh, or, or followers uh, as, as they may wish. Excellent.
Well, I'd like to thank our listeners for spending this time with us. Hopefully, you've gained some insight into this emerging trend uh, in the component manufacturer supply chain and in wood construction overall. Thank you for listening to SBCA's podcast, Component Connection. We are committed to bringing you a variety of information via this podcast. Please email your feedback or suggestions for future topics to podcast at sbcindustry.com. 